Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's energy regulator will decide on Monday next week whether ESCOM should be granted further tariff hikes this year. Terence Creamer attended this week's hearings and joins me to offer insight into the arguments. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Chanel. What exactly is ESCOM looking for? Well, they're basically looking for three things. They want money for diesel to keep the open cycle gas turbines running at very high levels of availability. Um, they want money to pay for contracts that they've entered into with RPPs, uh, independent power producers, under the short-term power purchase program, the STPPP. And they're looking for money to cover an environmental levy that might be uh, rising. So th in total, what we've already seen from April 1 is Eskom has had an increase of 12.7% in its tariff. And that's really made up of a, a base tariff increase of 8%, which was granted under the multi-year price determination methodology for the third, so it's MRPD3. Uh, plus, they got a clawback uh, under MRPD2, where they found that they had prudently incurred uh, additional costs related to primary energy and other operational items that uh, allowed it to go up to 12.7. So really we've been hit by a major hike this year. And the uh, uh, residents that fall under municipalities will from July 1 start feeling that pain. That will go because um, they'll be able to then increase their hike uh, by about 14% because they need to, to you know, recover those months that uh, from April to July that they haven't been recovering. So the, the residential hike will be 14% around that level from July. Now what Eskom's, uh, if they, uh, they had a selective reopener on those three items I mentioned, if they were to be granted those, there would be an additional amount over uh, that would take the overall uh, hike for the year to 25%. So it would be a major increase, almost doubling of what they've already been granted. And it would, in the municipality's case, it would need to be recovered over a nine month rather than a 12 month period, as well as Eskom. So with the actual increase would be beyond that 25% um, uh, in terms of the, the way it would work. So it w it's a major, it would be a major decision, it would be a major increase in the tariff. It would take the, the tariff from around 75 cents a kilowatt hour, that's uh, Eskom's tariff, uh, we pay far higher uh, as m municipal residents, but uh, to well over 80, 80 cents a kilowatt hour, so it would be a, a major increase. Um, and uh, the, the, the deliberation that a uh, nurse has to do is whether that is justified or not. What were the major arguments for and against another hike? Well, Eskom's argument is that, look, they already, they, they're burning this diesel at about a billion rand a month, and they're doing it in an effort to keep the lights on. They're saying without that 2,400 megawatts of capacity that comes out of the open cycle gas turbines in the Western Cape, Ankelach and Harikwa, they would be struggling, uh, we're having a load shedding already, but we'd be having much more load shedding and they're having to run them much harder than just peaking plants. So they're running them as mid, mid merit type operations. So we need to recover and they are spinning it and, and they believe it's prudently incurred because the cost of running the open cycle gas turbines is two rand 31 cents a kilowatt hour versus unserved energy, which is what we have during load shedding episodes uh, it's been independently estimated at upwards of 15 uh, rand a kilowatt hour. So 2 rand 30 a kilowatt hour versus 15 rand. So they're saying six times difference. But the other thing is they've also been told by the Energy Electricity War Room and by government to renew, extend the STPPP contracts. So they are paying for those. And those were never really budgeted for in the MIPD3. So they're wanting quite a lot of money for that. The environmental levy, I think everyone agrees, that's not going to happen. It, it was announced in the budget uh, by the finance minister, uh, in in February, but it has not been gazetted and it doesn't look like it's going to be implemented. So they have pulled back on that request for the environmental levy, but that would have added another good 2.5% to the overall tariff. So, uh, you know, that's their argument that it's, it's better to, we, that it's prudently incurred, let's pay for it. Um, let's you know, be realistic and uh, you know, the consumer needs to pay. <coughs> the account argument, as you can imagine, is major blowback from everyone saying that you know, South Africa really has had these steep, ever increasing power prices now over the last um, number of years, about a decade or so. We've just been really climbing uh, from being the cheapest electricity in the world 
to now being sort of in, in a much higher position. And even there's arguments that we're going to be getting to positions of almost uncompetitiveness relative to our peer countries. Um, and the, that's going to lead to major economic impacts for uh, businesses and, and for, consu for con residential consumers. There's an affordability challenge that people just can't afford these increases. For businesses, that affordability challenge is going to translate, we heard from the mining sector, into job losses. And from the automotive sector, they're also claiming heavy job losses. And from the manufacturing sector, steel and engineering sector, there's a view that, you know, we've done so much and we cannot do much more. And given the very weak uh, demand uh, for, for commodities, for, for steel products, and uh, for, for everything because of the weak uh, economic climate, this is really re-entering what they call a tipping point. The, the argument of BUSA, uh, which is the Business Unity South Africa, was also uh, there was a legal impediment. There, there was a feeling there was a legal impediment to this selective re-opener. Uh, in the sense that uh, they, they felt it took a, a radical departure from South Africa's regulatory norm and that it should be set aside. They said if it was not set aside on a legal or regulatory basis, then the, there should be offsetting amounts because Eskom is not, the reason we're really burning a lot more diesel and using these short-term, expensive short-term IPP contracts is because Kusili, Madupi and Ngula aren't operating at levels that they should have been. So because you're not operating them, you're not burning the coal, you're not using the water, etc. Therefore, there must be offsetting amounts that uh, have to be taken into account, which Eskom has not provided for in their selective reopener. And therefore, if there is an increase, it shouldn't be of the quantum of 12% uh, on, on top of the 12% already granted, but more of a sort of a 2.5% type levy uh, level. So that was their argument. But then the municipalities had a very strong argument uh, to suggest that, you know, they've been given a guideline or a, a national treasury directive that they can implement what has already been approved by NOSA and nothing more that is approved from May 15th this year. So if NOSA on June 29 gives an increase, they'll have to absorb that increase into the 2016-17 uh, financial year. And they're saying they're really not in a position to absorb that. Most municipalities are already cash strapped. The city of Cape Town estimated that if the increase were granted, they would have to absorb 700 million rand on their own. And they say that would have a knock-on effect uh, onto their sustainability as well as onto the uh, service delivery, whether you can do other, you know, you'd have 700 million rand whole that you couldn't fill and you wouldn't be able to provide services maybe on roads or water or other uh, important things. So that, that became a highly contentious issue was the, the deadline. And uh, NERSA was saying, can we grant this, given that the National Treasury Directive, the guideline is out to municipalities. ESCOM was saying, that's not your problem. You must just make a determination on the prudency of our application. And it's up to the finance minister then to determine the timeline and implementation. So that's the arguments for, but most of the arguments, as you can imagine this week, were heavily against. What do you think NERSA will decide? Well, that's the... Uh, multi-billion rand question because that's what it really relates to. It's, it's a lot of money um, that Eskom is looking for for diesel and for the short-term power purchase agreements. They've given themselves a deadline, a very quick turnaround. So they had the, the, um, the hearings, public hearings, which were limited to Gauteng this week. And on Monday, they're going to announce their determination. Now, I think they'll be very tempted by the, <laughs> the Busa argument of the set-aside because of the, the, the strange manner of um, Eskom's increase, or unorthodox, let's say, a manner of Eskom's selective reopener. And they could have a strong argument that, you know, um, go back either and do a proper re, uh, reconciliation under the regulatory clearing account for the first two years or of the MRPD3 and come back with proper audited figures, and then we can consider them, or come back at least with a full reopener. Um, and there must be a heavy temptation on that uh, front to just set it aside and ask for a much more thoroughgoing analysis from Eskom that people can get their teeth into and there's the full offsetting amounts in that. On the other hand, I think they're very aware that Eskom is spending this money it, um, it, and they are aware that without um, the diesel OCGTs every, every day that are being used, the lights would be going off far more. 
So they're in a little bit of a, a difficult position. They also know that Eskom has already been downgraded to junk. They, they also know that there is line of sight from Eskom's credit rating increasingly to the sovereign credit rating of South Africa. So if there's no give, um, as the, the implications not just for Eskom but potentially for South Africa's uh, own credit rating and no visit, a sign to the credit, credit rating agencies that there's a, a willing to accommodate a move more rapidly to cost reflective tariffs and deal with Eskom's revenue problem um, that, that, that there could be a spillover effect. So they are in a tricky position and it's going to be very interesting on Monday to see how they balance those two issues of I think the default feeling that Eskom's application was possibly not fully competent versus the reality that Eskom is actually spending this money and the implications of not giving them a bit more revenue could have spillovers not just for their financial st sustainability but for South Africa as a country's financial issue, uh, for credibility within the eyes of the credit rating agencies. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.